What's interesting about China um, is that they are also, when we get, I want to get back to ethics for a minute, um, is <laughs> they are coming out with this social credit score. So the idea is that they are using people's online activities and the data that they're sharing um, in all the different ways that we're connected via technology to basically score citizens on their morality. <laughs> And, and it, determine it, it, whether they are credit willing, worthy. right? It, it's, what's interesting is that the question is, is rating someone's credit based on ethics yeah. ethical? It's such a great question, and you're, you're opening up literally the black box <laughs> yeah. now of algorithms, which is a we whole We don't have another. to dwell too long on this, well, but you know, it's, it's interesting how data is being used in, in ways that, uh, you know, on the one hand might gain a com competitive edge, but is also a huge surveillance tool. It, it's a great question, and the fact is it goes both ways. I mean, what you're talking about could be an opportunity, if we look on the bright side for just mo one moment, it could be an opportunity for someone who, you know, a rural person who might not have access to credit to say, I can gain access to credit because we're going to use different metrics than have been used in the past. That's happening in the U.S. There are a number of think tanks in Washington, for example, that are looking at how could big data and algorithms be used um, in a way that would be inclusive. How can we make sure that, you know, low-income people, people of color who typically have lower credit rating scores based on traditional metrics, we can now use a whole bunch of other data points in order to get access. But those algorithms can be racist. Those well, that's, algorithms that's the whole can be, thing. Yeah. They, can, they, can, you know, they can be used for government surveillance. I mean, it's very easy in China and very worrisome to think about how getting, a, what, what does it mean to get a bad morality score, you know? I mean, uh, do, do you have to go to jail? Um, you know, I, I think that these things are very worrisome. That's why transparency is huge. It's yeah. huge, it's about trust. Um, you know, let's dig into that a little bit. You know, the idea that AI is programmed by humans. Yeah. And humans are deeply flawed and racist. <laughs> really? And discriminatory. Yeah. And AI ideally makes for better productivity, better efficiencies, right? I mean, that's the, the plus side of AI. Yeah. On the other hand, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about is AI sexist and racist and how, with, that, with, with such a lack of transparency, who, again, it goes back to sort of whose responsibility is it to figure out how companies are utilizing AI, for example, in hiring practices, yeah. how police departments might eventually use it in criminal justice, or family services might use it to determine whether somebody deserves to keep their child. I mean, there's just so many applications that I'm hearing yeah. about with AI. Well, it's interesting. You're reminding me of um, a really terrific book written by a friend of mine, Kathy O'Neill, called Weapons of Math Destruction. Mm -hmm. And she I gets into algorithm and all the examples you're talking about. And her take is that you need both the public and the private sector to be involved in this. I and mean, if you look at what, a comp let's say, just a company like IBM is doing, they've actually come out with an, a kind of an AI bill of rights, a data bill of rights, a real transparency, very easy, very clear to understand. This is how your data is going to be used. You will own the data. We will own um, some of the insights. The customer can also have some of the insights in these particular ways. And so it's a lot more transparent. And they're actually using it that as a competitive um, tool around privacy. But I also think, I do think that this is the sort of area that's going to require government oversight. And one thing that Europe is actually looking at right now is the idea of data trusts. So you know that there are health trusts, like the Wellcome Trust, or uh, the Icelandic Genomic um, Bank, where individuals, um, in this case biological or health data, is kept in a place where there is a public oversight of that. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is trust built into the system. A private company cannot simply hold and own this data and do whatever they want with it. So there's a discussion now about, could we find a middle ground, could Europe find a middle ground where um, Yes, there could be citizens' data that would be held and used for specific purposes to increase efficiency in health services, to help avoid uh, tax evasion, to create um, digital identities that could help people to get access to social services. And yet, um, that would be protected, that would be ring-fenced. Ring There's also another area we might want to talk about, about how individuals could use technology to own and monetize their own data. So I'm hearing that that's happening in Europe. Yeah. I am hearing that already there are companies trying to capitalize off of these new regulations yeah. by figuring out, once we've valued what your personal data is worth, what if you decide, I do want to sell it? Yeah, well then, you, you know, it, you, you hear, I don't know if you've heard about blockchain, the technology yes. that, is, blockchain has, you know, it gets associated with Bitcoin, which is a, 
um, a kind of a bubble, I think, a bubble cryptocurrency. It has sort of a nefarious reputation. But blockchain itself is just a technology that decentralizes data that might otherwise be held in hubs. So if you think about what Google or Facebook does in order to offer that incredibly profitable targeted advertising, they take data from large pools of people. They then hold it in kind of a, a basket in a centralized server. And then they uh, decide that, well, you seem like this other group of customers. And then they sell that grouping to advertisers who can then blast out information. That's why. But it's a public ledger. Is that important to? Um, it, it is a public ledger, although the algorithms are not transparent. So okay. that, and that's something that the companies, the companies are very reluctant to say, exactly how is this targeting working. But what we do know is that there's a grouping of data. And that's why when you get an advertisement, it may not be exactly what you want. It's not perfect for you. It's kind of an idea about who you are. Well, in, if you have a blockchain system where, say, a digital identity, you know, me, Rana Faruhar, all the thoughts I've ever had, my book, my FT columns, lives in this digital identity known as Rana Faruhar. And I can own that um, almost like a contract. And theoretically, not yet in practice, theoretically, I could monetize myself. I could say um, you know, to a publisher, yes, you can um, take the rights for my book in this particular way. And that would be secure. It would cut out a lot of intermediaries. And it's something that's already affecting, say, the financial industry, which makes a lot of money intermediating between transactions. But wouldn't that represent um, an existential threat to a company like Facebook? It would take yeah. the value of the data and put it in the hands of uh, back into the hands of, of the users. Yes, and that may be to circle back around to one of your very first questions, how's the business model changing? Yeah. A lot of people feel that the business model should not be about monetizing your data and keeping you online as pos as long as possible, you know, sometimes doing stupid stuff like watching cat videos, you know, <laughs> or maybe not stupid, but um, you know, wasting a lot of time online in order to monetize more data. Let's make the business model about providing something that you need, information, a service, quickly and efficiently. Let's let these firms kind of compete online, perhaps in online auctions, for the right to provide you with that service. That might be a new business model. Mm -hmm.